1979. Here's Simon Holt. Just waiting. Oh, running line and uh, Shim Murphy have parted company. And uh, running line, is that running loose at the back? They've got a catcher. Others forced to wait in the stalls. And they're off, and they've gone without running Lion. They set off in the Group 1 bet, Fred Oak starting uphill. Heartache tonight was quite sharply away, save the last dance too, with Sea of Roses on the inside, the yellow-jacketed Bright Diamond. Soul Sister is wider out. And then back to Eternal Hope and Red Riding Hood and Mammon June towards the inside of Carnarfon as they swing round a right-hander into a little bit of shade and making their way up the hill. And it's Sea of Roses who leads the way to heartache tonight. Then Red Riding Hood improving up on the outside, followed by Stable Companion, Save the Last Dance. Ryan Moore just glancing down to his left. Then Eternal Hope, Bright Diamond round the inside, Soul Sister further back, Mammon June. And then at the back is Carnarvon as they continue, continue to climb. And shock, uh, a shock at the start, running Lion hasn't taken part in the race as they run uphill still and it's Sea of Roses that leads the way. Heartache tonight. Out wide Red Riding Hood. Bright Diamonds on the inside of Save the Last Dance. Then Mam and June. Eternal Hope Carnarvon and Soul Sister and Frankie de Tori just about the bat markers now. About eight lengths behind the leaders. Turning left-handed and beginning the run down towards Tattenham Corner. Sea of Roses leads the way to Heartache tonight. Court three wide is Red Riding Hood. Bright Diamond is back on the inside from Save the Last Dance. Then Mam and June. Eternal Hope Carnarvon and Soul Sister still looking on as they race down inside the final five furlongs and heading towards this all-important left-hand turn. Sea of Roses and Heartache tonight. Red Riding Hood is caught out rather wide. Then behind these Bright Diamonds Save the Last Dance is just hunting the leads, just being nudged into the bridle by Ryan Moore. Then Mam and June followed back in the field by Eternal Hope Carnarvon and Soul Sister now making rapid progress down the outside Soul Sister as they run down the home straight, Sea of Roses Heartache tonight, Bright Diamond save the last dance under pressure then Carnarvon but look to the left here comes Soul Sister behind these Mam and June and then behind those Eternal Hope and Red Riding Hood and Soul Sister comes to challenge Carnarvon and then on the inside save the last dance who's staying on well racing down towards the final furlong it's Soul Sister that takes over now from Carnarvon and save the last dance, the Musidora winner she's kicking away, his soul sister in the hands of Frankie Dittori, Dittori. another farewell classic win for Frankie why is he giving up, he wins on soul sister, tight for second, save the last dance Carnarvon ran a blinding race they were well clear then of Mammon, June, Bright, Diamond, Heartache tonight, Sea of Roses, Eternal Hope and Red Riding Hood Frankie Dottori tastes success once again on the downs. Soul Sister it is, nursed into the race, delivered down the outside, holds on, Dottori eking out what he believed to be her suspect stamina. But again, as it was earlier in the afternoon, it was that killer bit of pace and class between the three and the two that sealed victory. This time in the Betfred Oaks. It's another Oaks for John Gosden after Annapurna in Nabal and the brilliant Tegruda. The favourite has run on to finish second here, save the last dance ahead of Carnarfon, who's run a mighty race. But much of the attention in the post-race analysis will focus on why the winner's stable companion, Running Lion, did not take part. And that's something we'll have to look at again. But Soul Sister gives Frankie Dottori another Oaks and John and Thady Gosden, first time that both licensees have had their name on this classic. High fives all round, Soul Sister in the colours of Lady Bamford, all class, the Musidora winner. 11 of 4, she's returned, Martin Dixon. Yeah, the on screen time, we'll get an official confirmation, was 2.36.6. We'll get official confirmation of exactly what the time is. If it's in and around there, we're talking not far off three seconds slower than the coronation oh, early on the card. The on screen sectionals late on, we're looking at 11.8, 11.7. Here we go at the start, just look, the green cap, the far side, 
This is running line. What's happened here? She, she tries to go down. She's reared up, gone back through the back of the gate. Sheen Murphy's come off. She's cantered loose. And that was it. They waited a little while. Murphy knew the writing was on the wall. Oh, your heart bleeds for everyone concerned with the running line. It really does. All that preparation, all that time. And with her out of the way, it just really left Soul Sister with Save the Last Dance to beat. And Save the Last Dance never really picked the bridle up as Ryan would have wanted her to, even though she's run well. She was behind the bridle on slow ground when it turned into a stamina sapping race at Chester. She was behind the bridle here when Soul Sister just had way too much pace. Frankie dropped in a little bit further back than I expected him to, having established uh, after two furlongs a position behind Ryan Moore. He allowed the race to develop in front of him. He swung wide, but he ultimately had to hold on, hold on, hold on, because he was thinking... I've got these covered. I don't need to commit this early. And let's take it from the start. It looked like See the Rose was going forward. Um, Red Riding Hood sat three wide. Interesting that Wayne Lord opted to stay wide and heartache tonight uh, sat second. They didn't go over quick in front. It certainly wasn't a burn up on the front end. Eternal Hope sitting in rear of mid division. But at this stage, where is the winner? You're looking maybe two from the well, back inside, outside Red Riding Hood and Martin. He dropped well, right in. Yeah, we, we said beforehand, would Frankie want a target on Ryan's back? It's clear that he did. And then Red Riding Hood, Wayne Lorden, didn't do him any favours. Through that second furlong of the race, he shoved him out the way. And Frankie had to take bite the bullet and take back even further than he, than he wanted to be, which left him sat last. The Phillies managed to overcome that. Now, uh, mid-race sectionals were a lot slower than the coronation. We were looking at in excess of 13 seconds of furlong. They haven't really gone that hard, but she hasn't quickened in the devastating way that Emily Upjohn did in terms of the sectional times that were on the, on, on the screen there um, through up the home straight. But she's done enough. It wasn't as brilliant a performance as I thought this was set up to see, in my opinion, but she's still done it she's done it well she's seen the trip out well and she's overcome a little bit of adversity and probably overcome a less than ideal position from right out the back of the field as well in a race that through the middle part of the race was not run at a strong gallop Frankie Dettori now wins the Coronation Cup aboard Emily Up John the Oaks on Soul Sister he's got a rest strongly fancied in tomorrow's derby he'll have a bunch of Ballydoyle around him there as well he's glad he came back in the, in the big stalls yeah <laughs> yeah but see, what? we've got the Californian sun here as well, Martin. We've got it all. And, of course, the yard in tip-top shape as well. We can talk about Frankie, but you'd have to tip your hat to John and Thady Gosden as well. When it comes to the classics, they rarely miss. And uh, after coming from the Musadora, this really has stepped up again. Even here, you could just see behind Red Riding Hood now on the very outside. Frankie is literally watching the race unfold, nudging along. She's extending. She's quickening gradually. There's no turn of foot like Emily Upjohn, but there doesn't need to be because he's not going to send her three furlongs from home. This filly is far less expensive experience uh, but yet going through the gears very nice with a qu quarter to run the race is in the bed and you have to tip your hat to Carnarvon who's run an absolute corker for a filly that I didn't think would stay a mile and a half I was completely wrong she just gets done on the line for a second but the winner is gone mm. she's a very good filly how good time will tell but on the day she was a winner everywhere oh yeah she's done it well and she's, she's seen the trip out you know strongly hands and heels late on I think she's probably just on that little uphill climb, final 100 yards, just starting to come to the end of her tether a little bit, but Frankie's only just pushing her out, hands and heels. It was comfortable, wasn't it? Um, that point, three to the two, was clocked at 11.86, and the, the two to the one, 11.78. That's around about a second slower than em Emily Upjohn was doing at the same point of the race, off faster fractions as well in the coronation earlier on. But, uh, no, she's a progressive filly. She's done nothing wrong bar the blip in the, in the Fred Darling and onwards and upwards into her season. But uh, Carnarvon, as I agree with you, she's run a belter, oh, hasn't she? What, what a wonderful well filly yeah. for, for Hunsker's start. And I, I spoke to one of her owners uh, earlier in the week and it just they were so thrilled just to be on the journey with this filly and, and very genuine. massively outrun her, run her odds and, and her pedigree. Well done to owner breeder Lady Bamford. That's the second Oaks winner she's owned and bred after Sariska back in, in 2009 trained by Michael Bell. John and Thady Gosden have another Oaks here, and she's going away at the line under Frankie Dottori. What a farewell year this is turning out to be. Just gets better and better. 
No, oh, she's a very good filly, isn't she? She overcame a pace and positional disadvantage in the Musidora. Quickened a couple of times in that race. It was really impressive. And she's done it again here to land the bet Fred Oaks. Jonathan Thady Gosden. Frankie on board, of course. Daughter of Frankel, just her fourth career start. She was 11 to 4. Saved the last dance, the odds on favourite. And Carnarvon was third. A 40 to one shot. There's a, a 15 pence in the pound rule for because of running lines absence from the race. 2.36.41 the time. Slightly better than uh, we thought. And um, 0.71 above. You can compare that with Emily Upjohn, who was 1.92 under. We must go to Carlisle pretty quickly because they're loading up.